ADHD Rewired, episode 396. This is the podcast for those of us with really good intentions and a slightly wandering attention. I'm Eric Tivers. I'm a licensed clinical social worker by training and a coach by design. I'm your host and I have ADHD. ADHD Rewired is more than just a podcast. We are a community. We are wired for connection and you are not alone. Go to ADHDrewired.com to learn how you can join us in our free secret Facebook group. Get additional resources for every episode, including links to any resources we we mentioned on today's show. You can support us on Patreon, sign up for our email newsletter, you can request podcast postcards to distribute to your clients and support groups, and you can learn all about our intensive online video-based coaching and accountability groups. You can do all of this at our website, ADHDrewired.com. We know that starting is the hardest part, so let's get started. Welcome back to another episode of ADHD Rewired. Today's guest is Karen Broda. Karen is a body and mind transformation coach and personal trainer for ADHD women. She teaches you how to thrive in your fitness, nutrition, and health, and not just manage it. Because you are worthy of your dream body, you feel incredibly confident in and with the mindset to match, even if you have ADHD. So I'm going to, uh, we're going to let the rest of this unfold in the conversation, but uh, uh, Karen is from Canada. Probably also worth mentioning that you spend your spare time either camping or training in the circus. I do. And thanks for having me, Eric. I'm excited to dive more into this topic of fitness and health. Just to give and, uh, listeners an idea of uh, where Karen is at. So she's actually in a tiny home, like a legit tiny home. Um, and if you... Uh, if you've read or listened to or watched uh, Harry Potter and you think of like the, the, the stairway under the, what was it called? The, not the pantry. Stairway, the cupboard. Um, that was the word. Yes. Uh, cupboard Karen's kind the of in a cupboard stairs, right yeah. now. I'm trying so hard not to completely laugh my face off right now because I am, have a cooler that is uh, in front of me with the mic balancing on top and just surrounded by clothes and storage right now. All right. Well, welcome. The picture of that. <laughs> I, I am glad that you are. You. Yes. I'm glad you're here. So um, before we hit record, I had, uh, we were talking a little bit about your bio and I told, and I was sharing with you that I was like, feeling a little uncomfortable with the idea like of even just sharing about trying to help someone build their dream body. Like I felt very like, I don't know why I felt very, I, I think the first I used was dirty, but not really dirty. It just felt like uncomfortable to me in a way that like, I want people to feel well, right? And sometimes feeling well doesn't always mean you have a, you know, a, a bikini a body or, mm, and I almost feel that yes. like even saying that almost is subversely like fat shaming. Right. And, and like, which is like, I don't want to do any of that. Right. <laughs> so um, how do we talk about wellness and fitness in a way that helps people feel um, good in their body in a healthy way where it's not all just about the image of the body because you 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 are also a former pro bikini athlete yeah we'll throw that in there too to really add uh fuel to the fire i guess <laughs> <laughs> and i'm eric i assume you're in your dream body <laughs> i know you're embracing that i will well, tell you i'm i'm doing noom right now um i'm, I'm working on uh getting to a a body that will make my knees hurt less when playing pickleball. Yes, yes. I feel like the body that doesn't ache and is sore as soon as you open your eyes in the morning is a good body. Yeah. So yes. dream body and even my background as a pro bikini athlete, which to be honest, I did not tell people that for most of the time I was coaching the last couple of years because of the image of what that portrays like i'm standing on a stage in bikini being judged like that's all roll our eyes a little bit but i was doing it for the reasons that i loved weight training i love the strength aspect i love being my fittest and strongest self i loved the determination and the grit that it developed and it was my sport and i didn't tell people because there was this general assumption so when we think of dream body 
people like yourself, you're like, well, is this just like a fat shaming thing? Are they just wanting this bikini body? Like, aren't they, shouldn't they be happy with the body they have? And that's my whole philosophy. It's I'm coaching you to have your dream body. And I say dream body because when you visualize where you want to be with your health, your fitness, your nutrition, like you're dreaming that up. Like, what does that look like? And for majority of the women I work with, it's not, I want to be skinny and that's it. It's like, I want to have more energy to play with my kids. You know, I want the stamina to, you know, go on a hike on the weekend and like keep up with everybody or, you know, just having the strength to be able to do any activity that comes to mind because we're always flitting to different things or have new ideas pop in of activities you want to try. So it's saying like, what is your dream that incorporates your body, your health, your fitness? You know, maybe it's just being able to eat nourishing foods and have that feel really simple. And also knowing or like telling my clients that you can have that, like you're worthy and deserve to have whatever you dream up with regards to your body and health. And also have this mindset that to match this healthy mindset, because the common thing that we hear growing up, it's like, oh, if you're thin, you're obsessed. Or if you work out too much, that's unhealthy. Or if you're, you know, have extra fat in your body, that means you're happy. And that's not necessarily true. Like you can have what you aspire to be in your health and fitness and your strength levels and still have a very healthy and happy mindset to match it. And that's my philosophy. Does that help <laughs> make some more sense of the dream body? <laughs> yeah. How, how did you kind of get into to fitness and what, what brought you to be uh, a pro bikini athlete in the first place? <laughs> Oh, the pro bikini athlete. I feel like I do throw that in now to give, I don't want to say to give me cred, but it gives people, I think because of the determination behind it, people yeah. are like, okay, you do know what you're doing and you know, another certification that just adds a little bit of extra confidence in people when they're hiring you. So how I got into fitness, it's funny you ask because I was reflecting on this last couple of weeks pretty intently where... I would always hear other coaches' stories of how they struggled with something, overcame it, and now they're a coach on that because they've seen the struggle, they've gone through it, they had their own transformation. For myself, fitness was never a struggle. And eating healthy, never a struggle. It came really, really easily to me. And thinking back, it's just like as a kid, so as a kid, I loved, I loved just moving my body. I would jump on my trampoline for hours. I would, you know, go jump roping outside for hours. I would go rollerblading, just did all the things. I loved gymnastics. I loved diving, all the sports because I could never stick with one thing for more than like half a year. And I take it you were the H in uh, ADHD? <laughs> totally. Well, it's funny because it, supposedly I don't have the H, but I was like, are you sure? <laughs> let's let's look <laughs> at my life. <laughs> So I love doing all the things and I loved how my body could move and what I could do with it. I love the strength aspect of things. I like the flow and the artistry of things. And as I got older, I just ignored everything around me, like all the media, everything you'd find online around fitness and health, because it was, I grew up moving my body. So I didn't look to outside sources of like, what should I do? How should I eat? What types of exercises should I do? I mean, as I got older, definitely started to second guess a lot of what I knew just because of the availability of information. But ignoring all of that really helped me create my own systems, my own flow. And just, yeah, made it really easy. Okay. Right. When you can ignore everything around you, this is before I knew had ADHD, you start to create what works for you versus trying to fit into the mold that society is telling you you need to follow. When did you learn of ADHD? It was, was it January this year? Oh, so actually relatively year? recently. Really recently. Yeah. Yeah. And was that, what, was that part of why you went to, to shift towards uh, being a personal trainer and, and coach uh, for women with ADHD? It was. And I think what I was coaching in fitness and personal training before, but when you can fully understand your market because you fully understand yourself, it made sense. And knowing the struggles I've had 
even in within fitness and other thing, areas of my life and how I've, you know, managed the struggles in fitness that I have had and also how fitness has helped in so many other areas of my life. And you understand your market so well because you understand the brain and how you work with it. Yeah, it made sense. It felt right. So, so many people that, that I work with have some kind of fitness exercise goal that they want to, they want to do when we start working on, uh, on habits. And like the first thing they say, all right, I'm going to exercise seven days this week. I'm like, hold on, wait a minute. And, or the other is they, they haven't been to the gym in years and they go to the gym and since they're there, they want to put in like 45 minutes to an hour at the gym. And I'm like, just show up, right? You have six fitness habits that you say really, um, can help really build that habit. Is that, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. There's the six habits I live by to make it such an easy part of my life. And I guess I'll preface it all by saying I really have been renaming working out exercise like those terms as movement. Because I feel when we say you need to go work out, it feels like this heavy burden. We're like, ugh, this is gonna suck. Versus you're like, just go move your body and have fun. Mm -hmm. It just sounds so much nicer, doesn't it? Free flowing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really my philosophy. It's like, what can be fun? What can just flow? I call it your movement flow. Like what really just feels really good to you? And just do more of that. So the fitness habits that I live by, it also fits into my formula of having the systems in place, finding something that's fun, but also having the mindset piece on board that, you know, you can do this and changing your beliefs around it. But the first habit is moving first thing in the morning. Like when you get up, your body probably aches a little bit, especially as you get older, maybe your knees are hurting. Yeah. So as I get out of bed and I take the first couple steps, I hear the, the pop of the right knee and the crack of the left knee. Uh, yep. Yeah, exactly. So, and then I realized, oh my God, I've turned into my dad. <laughs> and then you're like, how old am I really right now? Am I secretly 80 years old because I can barely move? Yeah. So moving your body first thing, not just for the aches and pains, because hopefully we don't have those forever. <laughs> we can work with that. But you know, as with your brain, things happen during the day. You get carried away. You forget all the other 500 things you're to do list you meant to do and didn't do. And you can just move first thing. First of all, it's you're moving your body. You're making sure you're taking care of your health right away. Second of all, it can give you so much focus and clarity of what to do for the rest of your day. Mm -hmm. Because for that beautiful moment in the morning, you're pausing your mind. You're feeling into your body by just, you know, integrating your muscle or moving your muscles together, integrating all the parts of brain and body and just pausing the spiraling thoughts in your head. And that can be really, really beautiful for being like, okay, now I have a moment of clarity to organize my day and tackle what's important. All right. So get moving first thing in the morning. I, when I first started uh, um, really making exercise part of how I manage my ADHD, um, I don't remember where I, I first heard this idea. Um, but the idea was to, cause I, cause I was for the longest time was like, oh, I'm not someone that could work out in the morning. And then I heard this thing that that was the idea of my strong why was doing, you know, particularly cardio has major benefits for, for the brain. Right. So I'm like, okay, like if that can help my brain function better, like I'll, I'll give it a try. And then I remember hearing this, uh, this idea of you want to make it so easy to engage in your morning exercise routine that you don't even have time to listen to those thoughts that exactly. go through your mind that convince you why you shouldn't do it right now. Right. And that to me, that was actually super helpful. I used to go to sleep in my, in my shorts and I had uh, this old, uh, recumbent bike that was literally, I think it had more duct tape on the seat than it actually had seat. And I had it in my family room. So it was like just such an eyesore, but it got me into the routine because I, I put it right in the place where I am. Cause if I was in the basement, I like forget that it was there. Exactly. And your body starts to crave it because it's just a natural part of what you do. It's like bookending your day. Like if you can start and end your day with the same thing every single day, you know, just like brushing mm-hmm. your teeth, it starts to give you that framework and it gives you that beautiful moment of like, oh, great. I don't even have to worry about what my brain's saying right now because it hasn't even had a chance to be a complete monkey and jump around and I can get done what is important for me and my health. And I'll say too for movement, it doesn't need to be a full workout. There's many mornings where I'm tired or I don't have time to work out, but having five minutes of movement can be really, really powerful. 
So what we're going to do is uh, during this break, you can get a little bit of movement. We're going to take a quick break and we will be right back talking more about feeling into your body. And uh, we're going to talk about a strategy that can help you achieve your goals. So we will be right back. Support for ADHD Rewired comes from our coaching community. If you are listening to this on the day it came out, that means our 26th season of coaching and accountability groups starts tomorrow. It's so exciting to see how much our coaching community continues to grow. And I am so grateful for all of our new members who join every season, our alumni members, and our peer mentors who support Moira, Roxy, and myself during these groups. It's really so inspiring to see all of these amazing adults with ADHD grow together and continue to show that we are really not alone. Really, thank you to all of you And if you are one of our over 700 alumni and you are not currently a member of our alumni membership community, email Barb at support at ADHDrewired.com with the subject line alumni and we'll get you the link to join. It's only $39.99 a month and it is open to alumni only. So whether you are new to this podcast or you've been a longtime listener, it's never too late to start planning ahead. Thinking about joining us for our winter season? For the first time ever, we will be hosting our registration kickoff event on a Saturday. So if a Saturday registration event works best for your busy schedule, head on over to coachingrewired.com to add your name to the winter interest list. And we will be doing that kickoff event on Saturday, October 30th. Our award-winning online video-based coaching and accountability groups are more than just about the skills and the tools. It's about the connection, community, and discovering that you don't have to go through your ADHD journey alone. If you have questions or you want to learn more, go to coachingrewired.com where you can get your name added to our winter interest list. Registration is by invitation only. So go to coachingrewired.com and add your name to the list. That's coachingrewired.com. And to all of our new members who are starting tomorrow, we will see you tomorrow. Support for this podcast comes from ADHD Rewired's virtual coaching community, Adult Study Hall. If you're finding it hard to overcome the resistance of getting started and grab your to-do list, if you can find it, in your toughest tasks, and come on over to Adult Study Hall at adultstudyhall.com. ADHD Rewired's a virtual co-working community created for ADHD brains just like you and me. When you become a member, you'll gain access to our on-demand drop-in room called Ash 24-7 that's available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's right, day or night, weekday or weekend, Ash 24-7 will be there for you when you need some real-time accountability to tackle your to-dos. Do you like being able to talk when you check in? We've got you covered there too. Your membership will include our guided and facilitated sessions, part of the weekly Ash Plus events. We have focused Ash Plus sessions covering themes like cleaning and decluttering, task buster sessions for your most dreaded tasks, workout sessions, job and career accelerator sessions, a write with me session, and more Ash Plus events are coming soon. And thanks to everyone who joined me over the last two weeks for those two hour Ash Plus sessions where we worked on things that are important and almost urgent. Find out more details about our current Ash Plus sessions by going to adultstudyhall.com. And if you're already a member of Adult Study Hall, I posted a poll last week about adding a second clean and decluttering session. So don't forget to jump in and vote so we can get that second session added to our cleaning and decluttering series. And if you haven't joined us yet, what are you waiting for? Membership is only $19.99 a month and you can try it free for your first week. Grab your to-dos and join the virtual co-working community built just for us adults with ADHD. It really does make a difference when you're working with people who just get it. That's adultstudyhall.com. We'll see you there. All right, we are back with Karen Broda. All right, so Karen, we were just talking before the break about the six fitness habits. And we talked first about moving first thing in the morning. And then you talked about feeling into your body. What, what's the difference? Because it seems like there's an overlap in there. Yeah, so feeling into your body, this is something I started incorporating into my life probably about a year ago that I realized was so, so effective for 
helping my ADHD and helping myself find focus and clarity. And I look at it as a way of mindfulness without having to lay on the floor. So, you know, in lotus position, meditating, which I found really difficult, where when I'm having these overwhelming thoughts or, you know, my brain's jumping all over the place or I can't, uh, I just can't focus. It's like taking a few breaths and feeling into what my body is literally feeling. Mm -hmm. And that can also feel like a really big challenge to pause and be like, what, you know, where am I feeling this in my body? Is it in my chest, in my legs? But doing movement makes it an easy way to start to learn to feel into your body. My favorite way is just to dance, (laughs) to really just have a dance party. I mean, in your kitchen, in your living room, wherever, because you start to pause what's happening in your brain and be like, okay, I'm going to move my body and my body's coordinating all the limbs and muscles. And you're like, okay, I feel like what was in my head and spiraling around is now gone. I had that pause and it just helps you connect more with your body. And that's why I say feeling into your body is really powerful. I think that's great. One of the things that we do in our adult study hall program, once a month, I leave this uh, Pomodoro dance party where it's 25 minutes of work. And then after every 25 minutes of work is five minutes of dancing. And I, uh, like at, at first I was like, am I going to really be able to get any work done? Like, during this and it's amazing what five minutes of just like intense dancing and looking like a fool uh you know can can do because when i sit down like i get right to work and it's like like if i was in the weeds like i feel like i'm no longer in the weeds and i'm back to what i need to do uh so i definitely um think that the idea of feeling into your body i've been trying to do more breaks myself at work if i go uh so my office is in this like residential neighborhood and i think the the taking a block around is about a half a mile and just like doing that and then coming back to sit down in my office, I'm like, oh my God, why don't I do this every single day? Because I just feel so just recharged and refreshed. I love all of that. It's very similar to myself. And like you said, you do it and you're like, why aren't I doing more of this? But once you start to remember that feeling of how great you feel, it's easier to remember a feeling than mm-hmm. a task on your to-do list, right? Yep. And you do start to do it more. It just takes a little bit of effort at the start, of course. All right. So those are the first two fitness habits. So you have uh, moving first thing in the morning, feeling into your body. Number three. So visualize and believe. And this is rooted deep into the mindset piece, which is the foundation of my whole formula of how to actually stick with exercise or what I call movement is visualizing who you want to be. Like, where are you even going with your fitness? I talk to a lot of women. I'm like, well, what do you want to attain? Like, what are your goals? And it's, oh, lose weight, have more energy. I'm like, great. But like specifically, what does that look like for you in your life? And once you start to really like like daydream or great at daydreaming, like nail down, like what does that life look like for you? Like, is it more energy to play with your kids? Is it more energy because, you know, you like to play pickleball and you want to be able to, you know, play multiple games back to back and start to believe that that's possible. Because a lot, a lot of uh, women who I work with, they're like, oh, I want to achieve this. But I'm like, do you even believe it's possible for you? And they're like, no, because, you know, I have X, Y, Z in my life. It's never worked before. I can't stick with anything. So starting to know where you're going, what that looks like specifically for you, really, really get clear and then start to work on, is this possible for me? And if not, what, what are the beliefs that are coming up? Why do I doubt this? And that's where we start the mindset work. And you mentioned like kind of visualizing, but we know that there's a large percentage of the population who literally can't visualize in their mind's eye. Yeah. And for this, it can look at any way. And maybe it's just writing, literally writing down like, what do you want in chief? X, Y, Z. Okay. If you want more energy, why do you want more energy? Okay. Well, what's that going to help you do? And it can just be like getting, you know, asking yourself why multiple ways. So you have a clear idea of where you're going versus more energy. It's like, well, how can we, how can we measure that? How do you know when you've achieved that for yourself? So visualization and and believing that you can achieve your goals. Then what? Number four. Number four is creating a fitness system is what I call it and sticking with it. So your fitness system is just like creating that natural routine in your life, like brushing your teeth. And if you forget to brush your teeth, don't worry, I get it. But we want to try to make it a system, something that happens without you needing to think about it, like moving first thing in the morning. So some of the ways that I do it and coach clients on, these are like the tactics. It's 
okay, maybe you're playing the exact same song at the start of every workout. So once you start playing it, you're like, right, okay, this is a trigger. I'm going to go work out. Or I have the same drink every time before I work out. So that always tells me when I drink that, it signals to your brain, right, okay, I only have this before I go work out. So now I'm going to go work out. It's always, you know, changing into some sort of work of clothes versus working out in your pajamas. It's if you are working out at home, go into a different room or I mean, in my tiny home, it's all one room. So I'm just literally going outside to signal, okay, I've now changed places, changed my environment. It's now time to shift into my workout, my movement. So that's why I say when you create your fitness system, something that's going to signal to your brain, it's time to go move your body, create your schedule around it to make it really simple to remember. I, if I have to schedule a workout or different workouts every week, that's exhausting. I'm never going to do it. I'm going to forget. But every Monday, I do the same thing. Every Tuesday, I do the same thing. Every Wednesday, I do the same thing. And maybe that's as simple as I'm going for a walk every Wednesday morning great stick with it at least for the time being to start to create that habit so it feels like it's a part of your life and day like stick with it for six weeks three months whatever you need and then you can be more intuitive because you have that foundation and base to go off of what have you found to be the couple things that pretty reliably derail people's exercise routines and Because if we can identify what reliably derails it, we can then develop strategies ahead of time to to respond to that. The the big one I've seen probably in most recent even weeks and over time is the I need to work out for one hour, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Like this set thing is like, I need to do this. It's going to suck. It's going to be hard, but this is what I need to do. You're like, no, no, just don't (laughs) fit into what you society has maybe told you what you believe like make it work for you of course based on your goals like making sure we're moving towards your goals but what works for you and I always ask my clients like how many days a week are going to work out like seven like what's realistic like five okay let's cut that in half how does two sound (laughs) well and I always ask like what are you currently doing like if it's zero then let's start with one or two maybe three right like but thinking about like, so someone has a, a say, a fairly well-established uh, workout routine. They've been doing it now for, say, three or four months. What do you find derails these people? Because I see this happen a lot where people, like, they get into a good flow of working out. And then there's a couple of things that I, that I often see happen. And I'm just curious if it's, it's similar from what you've seen. It's usually someone gets sick. Someone has to travel. Like, I think those are the two things, being sick and travel. Like, that's what throws people off the routines. But what yes. have you found? That or usually something to do with kids or family, like something's interrupting, especially for Mm -hmm. women. Holidays. Yes, yes. And that is what, yeah, what I coach on. It's like, okay, you can't stick to this for the long term because something keeps coming up that throws you off. What I've seen, it comes down to this mindset piece that they're getting thrown off and they can't get back on. And it's starting to ask them, like, do you believe you're actually this, you identify as this person that, like you're just fit you're just naturally strong you're just that's part of your life and often they're like no but that's who I want to become you're like well if you were that person if you identified as this person that you know you just that just what you did every day you just moved your body every day that would feel easy it's like I'm just that person who always cooks healthy foods I always have healthy foods on hand you just naturally start to do that So sometimes after three months of like working out consistently, it's like, do you still believe that you can have this as part of your life? Or is this something you're just doing because you feel that you need to do, but you don't believe you're worthy of actually having this as part of who you are. And that for me, you know, in my fitness journey was a really big thing of being like, I'm not chasing something anymore. This is actually my life and who I am. And once I made that switch, everything became easier. I could be really intuitive with my movement practice, my working out, my eating healthy, knowing that if I got sick next week, it wouldn't all fall away. Because I know for myself um, and and the the, uh, getting sick or or traveling historically have been things that have like made me forget I ever had a workout routine. 
right? And so when we're trying to create goals, we kind of, we want to first look backwards before we look forward so we can figure out what, what are the smart ways to set up our goals. And so even when I'm sick, I start thinking about, all right, like what's going to be the first workout I do? Like when I start to feel better, when I travel, I now make sure that there's a place that I can work out um, to keep that routine going and make sure that the day that I come back, that no matter how tired I am, I get some kind of workout in because that's been the, you know, it's, oh, I got to, I got to catch up with the work that I missed while I, while I was out. Um, oh, I'll skip it this day. And then it's like, oh my gosh, I haven't worked out in three weeks or I haven't worked out in two months. And it's, you know, and that's going to happen. And I think just getting back up and knowing that it's sort of like a marathon runner who's been on the couch for the last three years, right? You don't, you don't get off the couch and run a marathon, right? It's like, yeah, maybe you ran that marathon a couple of years ago, but starting off by maybe just to go on for a, a brisk walk. Yeah. And this is where it comes back to what feels fun. Like what feels fun that moves your body? I call it your movement flow. It's like, where are you engaging your body, your mind? And it just flows. It just feels really fun. Start there. Let's rename this whole or you have to have a hard workout. You have to you know, train for your marathon again. It's like, what just feels fun? And once we can approach it that way, typically people are like, well, I mean, playing pickleball. There we go. That, feel, that feels fun. That you know, I'll talking. do, even if I'm sick. I know, if you have a marathon, like I'm always like, what would it be like to even have an inkling of a desire to ever want to do that? Because I have zero desire to ever want to run a marathon. I'm so glad you said that because myself as well. Yeah, I used to be a long distance runner as well back in the day, but I'm like, I'll never run a marathon. Oh my, it sounds you, terrible. My, my body, so here's kind of a thing. I, it would be nice to be able to like feel that I can run because it's probably one of the easiest things to just get out and go. Like all you need is a pair of shoes and like get out, right? I hate running. Like I feel like my body, it does not, like my legs sometimes are having a different conversation with my brain than the rest of the body. Like it literally feels sometimes like my legs are like out of sync with the rest of my body. Like for me in the morning, it's actually really bad. And I just have these very vivid memories when I was a kid having to run the mile, literally wondering why my legs aren't communicating to my brain because it just felt so awkward. And I was always like the last one to finish, even like when I, like when I was in high school and I played like two years of football and I was, I didn't really understand the game. I wasn't uh, like diagnosed with ADHD yet. But like I was in really good shape. Like it was probably the best shape I'd ever been in. And the very end of, of practice, we would have to run this giant laugh. It's like four connected football fields. It was almost without fail. I was almost always the last one to finish. And like I literally thought I was gonna die. Like, and I'm just like, do people how do people run and not feel that way? It's like, or do people just like like that feeling? I just don't get it. I am laughing so hard. I I do. I do still enjoy some running. I used to do like longer distance, but the people, yeah, they're like, I'm going to go for a three hour run. It's like, what? Three hours? I can do the biking. <laughs> like I can, I, I used to, I used to buy a bike for four hours at a time. Like I can, I used to be able to do a hundred miles without, without stopping. I mean, that was That's years amazing. ago. But. Amazing. I, Cause I do not enjoy biking. It terrifies me, <laughs> which is funny because I'll really? climb 30 feet in the air and tumble down on silks, but biking terrifying. Wait, 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 wait. So you're terrified by biking, terrified. but you yes. were in the circus. Yes. Yes. I also fly from a trapeze and land on my back from like 30 feet in the air. But yeah, biking, you could fall off. That's dangerous. So dangerous. <laughs> so I know that, it, that danger happens when we don't take breaks. So we're going to take a quick break and we will be right back as we continue this conversation with Karen Broda. Yeah. I know podcast ads can be really annoying. You know, the kind where the host goes on and on about their programs and you just want to hear the contents. Well, did you know that you can get ADHD rewired ad free? We have a special ad free feed that you can get for just $5 a month. That's about a buck an episode. How do you get the ad free ADHD rewired? You ask by going to ADHD rewired.com slash Patreon. $5 a month gets you ad-free episodes. At $10 a month, you'll get a bonus audio track every month on that special podcast feed. And on the fourth Tuesday of every month for our $25 a month patrons, I host a coaching session on Zoom. And we drop the audio recording of that coaching session right into that ad-free podcast feed for people who give it $10 a month. Sign up at ADHDrewired.com slash Patreon. Perks for our patrons start at just $5 a month with ad-free episodes, but you can support us at any amount that makes sense for you. 
No matter the contribution, I am grateful for any contribution you're able to give. You know, it costs around $700 a month for editing alone. So while podcasts are free to you, the listeners, they are not free to produce. So I just want to thank all of our new and old patrons for supporting this show. And if it's not on the cards for you right now, but you're still here tuning in every week, I'm glad you're here. So if you love this show and you are able to show your support for what we are doing here at ADHD Rewired, head on over to ADHDrewired.com slash Patreon and become a patron. Perk start at just $5 a month and you will no longer have to listen to these ads. That's ADHDrewired.com slash Patreon. And thanks. Hello, ADHD Rewired listeners. Do you know about all the other shows we have here on the ADHD Rewired Podcast Network? You can find all of our shows by going to ADHDrewired.com slash podcast network, where you can find show notes for this podcast and all of our other shows. We have Hacking Your ADHD with Will Curb, our king of dad jokes, who gives awesome tips and strategies for managing your ADHD in 20 minutes or less. If you are a parent with ADHD, have a child with ADHD, or both, the ADHD Essentials Podcast with Brendan Mahan hand is a great resource for parents and educators. We also have ADHD Diversified with MJ Siemens, sharing her stories through her audio blog about her experience as an Asian woman with ADHD. And there's the ADHD Friendly Lifestyle with ADHD Rewired Coach Moira Maven, whose show focuses on late diagnosed women who want to try different. And our newest show called Wait, what was the question? We'll hit your podcast feed soon. Host Will Curb and ADHD Rewired Coach Extraordinaire Roxy Martin are hosting this podcast. Start submitting your questions now by emailing Will and Roxy at questions at what was the question podcast.com. And if you want to get to know us a little more, you can meet all of us from the ADHD Rewired Podcast family every second Tuesday of the month for a live Q&A. To join us live on Zoom so you can ask us your ADHD-related questions, go to ADHDrewired.com slash events to register. That's right. You can join me, Brendan, MJ, Moira, Will, Roxy, and Barb every second Tuesday of the month at 12.30 p.m. Central. That's 10.30 a.m. Pacific, 1.30 p.m. Eastern. Register now by going to ADHDrewired.com slash events. Then to find out more about all of our shows here on the ADHD Rewired Podcast Network, head on over to ADHDrewired.com slash podcast network where you could easily subscribe to all of our shows. And we would really, really love it if you left an honest rating and review for the podcast. It really does support our show by helping other people know that this is a great show to listen to. And thank you to all of our listeners who tune in to our shows. Thank you for all of the support for listening, subscribing, sharing our shows with the ADHD community so we don't have to feel so alone. Thanks. And we are back. All right, so Karen, um, you were just sharing with us that uh, you're a little bit afraid to get on a bike, but you were in the circus. And I know that we haven't got to all six habits yet. So I, I want to get to the, the circus and the rest of the habits. So I think we're on habit number five. Yeah. And even just to backtrack to habit four, the question I would pose to everyone, all the listeners is, well, if you're struggling with, you know, something throwing you off, you're, you're getting sick, you're traveling, you can't get back onto your workout plan. Start with, okay, what feels really fun that moves my body without the judgment that it needs to look like X, Y, Z, it needs to be hard, it needs to include a certain aspect you've done before, just what feels fun. And the second question I'd ask is, if you just were this person where, yeah, fitness was just something you did, it was literally part of your life and identity, what would that look like? And get clear on what that would look like for you because once you can start to step into, yeah, this is just who I am. It's just what I do. It's just what I embody. I promise it will start to feel less and less of a chore and something that feels like it's a task versus just what you do. And I definitely think that that is where I am at, that it's just part of, it's part of what I do. And I would definitely say that is definitely not how I always have been. Like, there it definitely was like, oh, I got to figure out when am I going to get this workout in? When am I going to go on this awful machine? When am I like, you know, and it's, it really has like, I, I love being active. I love hearing that. And even though I said at the beginning, like 
fitness has always been easy. There was definitely periods of time where I was very regimented because there was this fear of like, I need to do this. And if I don't do this, I'm never going to do it again. I'm going to fall off the way again. And what you hear so much. And it was through the whole, my whole journey of like, wait, no, this is just who I am. And it's what I love. And it's also leaning into what movement do you love right now? Because maybe you loved something before. Maybe, you no, know, I used to love long distance running. I don't love that at all. Now, I used to love weight training. I'm barely at the gym. But circus, which I never was interested in before, I love. So, so what do you do in the that. circus? <laughs> what do I do? I do not juggle. and I'm not very good at handstands. I'll tell you that. But I do aerial silk. So those are the two kind of ribbons that hang from the ceiling. That is my go-to. And then I do flying trapeze. So yes, that is where you fly on a trapeze bar and get caught by the next person on the bar. I literally just like I had that feeling in your gut when you look over a tall like building like and you look down or like oh god like when you said that I was like oh my god I can't like oh you just love it I it's funny I have a fear of falling but it's amazing <laughs> I think so because what, it, what caught you to do that I, yeah I don't know did you lose a bet like what happened right? I think it was just <laughs> the idea that I could tumble down from a ceiling on silks just wrapped in some knots sounded really cool and looked really cool and for some reason if I I think it's and maybe it's a control issue when I can wrap myself up I'm like I'm safe I, I I did the wraps on this if I fall it's my own fault it's like it feels safer than a bike right uh, maybe I don't know did you know someone who was in the circus like said hey come try this like no I I think at the time my sister had bought me like a gift certificate for a silk studio and I'd wanted to try it. I was really intrigued by it and then did it once. It's like, this is the best thing ever. Then I traveled um, to uh, LA, that area around there was in Santa Monica, I think, did flying trapeze. I was like, whoa, this is the best thing ever. So then I moved halfway across the country just to do flying trapeze because it was that amazing. Wow. So I recommend. Wow. It's really amazing. Yeah. Fear, it's, your fear of falling does start to go away and it just feels like flying. Hmm. Yeah. Nice. I recommend. You ever uh, uh, skydiving? Yes. I also love that. I feel like I would love to do it. I also am so afraid that I'll throw out my back, but like, mm, I don't know if I want to do it. Maybe it's what your back needs or hanging upside down in circus mean very decompressive for the spines. Yeah. Quite wonderful. It was one of those inversion boards. That yes. But you can lay on. Exactly. It'll feel great. But better. <laughs> but better. <laughs> okay. So. Back to fitness habits. <laughs> yes. Back to fitness habits. Okay. What's the next one? Number five. So create your workout mood. This goes back to creating your fitness system. That, you know, routine where you're like, I'm doing the same workouts Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm always wearing my workout clothes as I work out. Bring your workout mood. This is very important when every gym was shut down and you're working out at home and you're like, everything is distracting and I should start the dishes and I should put some laundry in and then I should go like check these messages on my phone. So creating that workout mood really looks like go into a different room, change into your workout clothes, play the same music, follow the same workout plan, whatever you're doing to signal to your brain, okay, it is time to now work out or move my body or when you use the Pomodoro technique, it's like, I have five minutes to have a dance party. Great. Knowing that anything else that you need to do can wait until that timer goes off. This was something I, I mean, swore by through all my weight training years, training for bikini competitions was I would never have my phone on or even have my phone in the gym because that was as soon as that is in front of you, you're going to get distracted. So my phone was never allowed when I was working out. And it really gave way to that whole workout mood that this is what I'm here for. This is going to help me focus. And it's going to feel so good after. It's funny when, when I, uh, I was going to the, the gym or if I'm on like the, just a, an aerobic machine, you know, elliptical, bike, whatever. I don't think anything feels more like torture than not having something to listen to being on one of those machines it's like I will literally like cut my workout way short if I, if I don't have my headphones or like if I can't listen to something. Like if I can get really engrossed in something or uh, watch like a show on Netflix while I'm on a machine, 
Because it literally, like, it's one of those things where I, the best part of the workout is after it's done, right? Like, so glad I did it, but I maybe kind of hated every minute of it. So I need to, like, kind of distract my, my attention. Otherwise, I'm just thinking about how much I hate doing this because it's so boring. Like, I love, I like having exercise. I love how I feel afterwards. Like, everything just feels better. But, like, the boring factor of it is just, like, it, it's intense. I mean, it's, it's this very almost painful feeling. So if I don't have a good audiobook, a good podcast, or a Netflix show I can watch, like I was when I was finishing, have you ever seen Ozarks or Ozark? I have not. So it's uh, it's, it's on Netflix. It's it's really intense and kind of troubling, um, but I kind of loved it. And I think it was the show that's for about fifty minutes, which was great because it was a little bit longer than what I was going for. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to keep watching this if I'm not working out. So I'm like, I'll just, I'll stay on the elliptical until this, this episode is over. And like, it was actually a great strategy to extend my workout. I love that, and I've used that before when I would go running. And this is when I did not like running anymore. I was like, you know what? I do enjoy a little bit of running, so it always saved my favorite podcast for when I'd go running. But what I challenge you to to do is what I call your movement flow. It's like, what do you really love to do? But what also engages your brain in the moment and your body at the same time where you literally feel like you're in flow, where you can't do it forever. It's challenging, but you're so like engrossed in what you're doing. That- well, I would say mountain biking is that. For me. And, I, and I don't do a lot of mountain biking anymore because... Uh, when I'm on the trail, like I forget that I'm no longer 18 and my like my my ribs don't like being cracked because um, that's happened more than once. So but I, I so a couple how long ago was it? I don't know. It was six years ago. I bought. Uh, have you ever seen it's called an elliptigo? I've heard of it. I think I've I, I've seen it on like infomercials. So, yes. Yeah, so it's amazing. So so I got this elliptigo because I was having back issues uh, and I and I've had back issues on and off. So it's like an elliptical motion, except it's a bike. It actually goes, right? So I, I do that and I can ride on that for um, probably about an hour without getting too tired. But what I'll do is I will now ride my elliptigo to the pickleball court since it's, it's about a 10 minute uh, ride. So by the time I get to the course, I'm already like my body's already warm and it's just, it's fun. I, I have a, uh, one of those uh, Bose, um, uh, a flip five, not not Bose, it's JBL Flip 5 speakers, which are great because I don't like having headphones in when I'm on like a bike because I want to be able to hear my surroundings. So I have it like attached to to my my uh, elliptigo and I'm like blasting fish and it's just like, I just, it feels amazing. Like, I love it. I love that. And I say what you love about that and what you used to love about mountain biking, it's like distill that down. Like what aspects do you absolutely love about your elliptigo that you- It requires me to be laser focused. There you go. Like, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't be distracted, otherwise I'll get hurt. There you go. And, like, what do you love about pickleball? Like, what are the aspects that you... Because the inside yeah. of my brain goes, get the ball, 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 get the ball. Like, that's... <laughs> and I love it. It's just, like, so fun. And, like, I, my, I have pretty fast reaction time, um, at least on, on the pickleball court. And it's just, like, so fun to be able to get these shots that, like, seem impossible to get. And then, you know, people are like, well, how'd you do that? I'm like, I don't know. Uh, it's just, it's fun. I just love it. Um, and then what did you love about mountain biking? Like absolutely love about it. The adrenaline. A hundred percent of the adrenaline. It was because I was doing stuff that is kind of dangerous. And it was probably the only activity that I can recall doing like post-diagnosis. And I've been diagnosed for 20 years now that I could probably do unmedicated, right? Because it was like every other scenario in life, I have a thousand other thoughts going into my mind. When I am, especially if I'm on like a challenging trail, right? If I'm going kind of fast and I have to really like just be so tuned into the trail, right? Like my mind's quiet and there is very few other times where I get that, uh, you know, maybe once a year I'll go wave running. Oh, so great. Like I love that too. That, like one, one of the, and this isn't really a fitness thing, but um, I'd love to get a, a motorcycle. It's one of my goals for possibly this year, if not next year. Um, but yeah, just stuff where it's just like, there's an element of, of risk involved where you have to, you like, you don't have the luxury of tuning out. I want you to to keep those in mind and think of what other activities incorporate the same thing. And you may not know, but just creating a list and trying them, because I'm sure you can also find some other activities that include that adrenaline that include you to be laser focused and include the quick reaction time. Ping pong. 
I love ping pong. Ping pong? Yep. Amazing. Love ping pong. Amazing. And things that like aren't going to kill your body because that's your flow. After, so after, uh, after my divorce and my ex took uh, the, the dining room table, I was like, the dining room is the stupidest room in the house. We use it like three times a year. So I'm like, I want, so I told my, uh, my, my girlfriend, like, I'm not going to replace the dining room table. I just got like a ping pong table. And she got me a ping pong table for my 40th birthday. It was like the best gift ever. And we play yes. all the time. See, so this is what you need to do. It's like, what do you love? And then if it's not feasible right now, because, you know, maybe your body is just not going to be able to keep up with mountain biking, aspects you love of it. Take that and then start to brainstorm activities that you think would include those. Just try them and see what sticks because you never know what you're, you may love. And something that's going to work for you, work for your body and feel really good where you're so laser focused, everything goes quiet and you're moving your body at the same time. And that is your movement flow and it makes it easy. It makes it fun. Have you seen that? I was just thinking like, I wish that I liked swimming uh, as exercise, but I, I, I don't. Like I just have a hard time coordinating all the motions with the breathing, but I like being in the water. Have you ever seen, I think it's in, uh, in Mumbai, this like super ultra deep pool that like, it's like a hundred feet deep or something like that. And you can like, it was, it, they showed it on, I saw some video on YouTube about it. And like Will Smith was like, went there and it was just like, looked so amazing. Or there's these like runes that you go like swim through. Something like that just sounds amazing to me. It's funny. This sounds amazing. It sounds terrifying to me because deep water is scary. Love water. I will swim in it, but deep water sounds scary. Um, so I love how opposite <laughs> our brains are right now. Oh, I would totally do hang gliding by the way. Yes, I've never Have done it. Have you ever done it? No, but I was thinking of it this week. I want to go do it. Like how cool would it just be like a human kite without a string? You, I mean, that's what it is, right? You need right? to come down and do circus. You are going to love it. <laughs> or or squirrel jumping. I mean, that just seems like a, like something I should like definitely do and would be really stupid if I do. Because like, have you ever seen these videos? They're like literally flying down a mountain in this like suit. Know? Like, look like, oh my God, they are like 10 feet away from breaking every bone of their body the entire trip down the mountain. And you're watching, you're like, how is this even possible? But you also want to do it in this like, yes. Absolutely want to do it. (laughs) That just looks like the most like amazing adrenaline thrill like ever. Oh man. I think we're just telling the listeners to go jump off cliffs right now and um, like literally jump off cliffs. (laughs) Yes. I think it's about have fun, right? It's, It's like, and like, yes, working out or moving is important, right? Moving is important, but like we have ADHD. If it's boring, we're not going to do it. It's like, what is fun? What, what your goals are? Because of course, if you have specific goals, working towards those in some sort of movement practice or including the things that are really fun and the things that you're like, I enjoy, but the, the things I enjoy get me close to my goals. So I'm going to, you know, include those. And what engages your body and your brain so intently together. And that's like your winning combination right there. And it sounds like we're getting to that last fitness habit, which I think is probably one of the most important things for doing anything in life that matters. It's knowing why every day. This doesn't mean I need to say my why out loud. It literally just means like, where are you going? And when you forget where you're going, revisit what you wrote down before of that visualization and believing that you can actually do this. And if that changes, also be okay with that. And just relook at, okay, where am I going and why am I doing this? And most importantly, you're treating your body well and you're worth that. You're worth moving your body. You're worth eating well. You're worth having fun. No matter how many other things pull your attention in a day, no matter how much work you need to do in a day, like you and your body are so worthy of feeling good, of being able to move your body and literally living your best life. Karen, I know that you uh, you put together a uh, an online course, and you also have a, a freebie and a discount for that course for for our listeners. Want to uh, go ahead and share that? Yeah. So the freebie is a fifteen minute morning and night routine that work for ADHD. I mean, morning and night routines, I absolutely love. I struggled with them for many years, so I cracked the code on few certain things that make them really easy to stick with. So I have my go-to routines that you can download for free. You, oh, I guess we'll put the link in the show notes. It's probably easiest. And then the freebie, I have a one week course. So it's only one week. You're not going to get bored by modules over a course of many, many weeks. It is how to work out consistently. I tell you just that we create your formula for 
your fitness system, your workout mood. We do goal setting together that actually works for ADHD brain. Plus you get a coaching call with myself and you're getting 20% off with the code rewired. And we can put that in the show notes as well. Awesome. Um, and so if you like what you heard here, go check that out. I have I've not seen the course, but judging just by the, the energy of this conversation, I think it'd be really worth uh, checking out. Awesome. All right. Uh, Karen, thank you so much. What what was your website? I do not have a website. It's too overwhelming for uh, my brain. So, <laughs> so how, do pe- how do people re- like find the stuff? Yeah, I have YouTube is where you'll find me. So fitness, nutrition, and mindset for ADHD. It's how you'll find it. And otherwise, I'm on Instagram at Karen.Brodas, my first dot last name. Yeah. Okay. And it's B-R-O-D-A. Karen, thank you so much for... Uh, this conversation this was fun and thanks for uh doing the work you had to do to uh get better quality audio this is by the way take two of this attempt to record this uh conversation and uh what one little note that i wanted to throw in there when we first spoke you told me i'm i think you said i'm thinking about building a tiny home that was right and then when we actually talked like for the second time when we attempted to first do this interview you were actually in a tiny home. And that window of time wasn't that long. No, so I got to say that was impressive. Yeah. And th- again, thanks so much for having me. And I want to add on to like our most recent call or take one of audio. You made the joke like, oh, if only you had a walk-in closet in your tiny home. I was like, I, I do have a walk-in closet in my tiny home. That's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I can sit in my closet. <laughs> Well, thank you. We've been sitting for a while. So let's uh, let's get some movement and uh, let's wrap this one up. Thanks, Karen. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me. It's ADHD Awareness Month and there are no shortage of ADHD events happening online this month. This Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, I'll be joining TikToker and ADHD coach Aaron Croft, who you heard here back in episode 390 for a panel discussion called Behind the Scenes, What It's Really Like to Be a Successful ADHDer. Register for free at ADHDrewire.com slash behind the scenes. That's ADHDrewire.com slash behind the scenes. Behind the scenes is all one word. And the International Conference on ADHD is just a few weeks away, November 4th through 6th. And thanks to COVID, it's going to be virtual again this year, so you won't have to spend money on airfare or hotels. And I was able to get listeners a pretty sweet discount. Get 25% off this incredible conference when you go to ADHDrewire.com slash ADHDcon. H-D-C-O-N, will be redirected to the conference page and the discount will already be applied. I will be speaking about how to make accountability work. Go to ADHDrewired.com slash ADHDcon and you too can help promote ADHD awareness by sharing this episode. This is Eric Tivers. Thank you for listening and congratulations for making it to the end. ADHD Rewired is more than just a podcast. We are a community focused on learning, growing, and connection. The website is ADHDrewired.com. You can find timestamped summaries and additional resources for each episode. Apply to join our free and secret Facebook community. Learn more about our award-winning intensive online video-based coaching and accountability groups. Join the Adult Study Hall virtual co-working membership community. Find all the other podcasts on the ADHD Rewired Podcast Network. Sign up for my email newsletter to get exclusive content that you won't hear anywhere else. And use the search tool to find episodes on specific topics. You can do all of this at ADHDrewired.com. While you're there, click on the Patreon button. If you are a regular listener, consider making a monthly contribution by becoming a patron. If you are able to financially support my work, it would mean a lot. This show is free to you, the listener, but it's not free to produce. Plus, patrons get cool perks like ad-free episodes and access to recordings of coaching calls and $25 a month patrons can join me once a month for a group coaching call. You can follow me on Twitter at Eric Tivers. You can like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash ADHD Rewired. If you're a coach, therapist, or related professional, connect with me on LinkedIn. 
at linkedin.com slash Eric Tivers. Subscribe to ADHD Rewired on YouTube to see selective interviews and other videos I've made. Podcasts change lives. You can make a difference in someone's life by spreading the word about this podcast. Mention it in your online communities on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, or wherever you hang out online. And be sure to share it with your friends, family, your therapists, your coaches, doctors, siblings, parents. And if you, your coach, therapist, doctor, or ADHD support group leader would like a pack of podcast postcards to hand out, you can request those at the website, ADHDrewired.com. If you are a member of Chad, Ada, or any other ADHD support group, please be sure to tell them about this show and all the shows on the ADHD Rewired Podcast Network. You can even show them how to download it on their phone. And if you really loved this particular episode, please hit share on your podcast player. I'm only one person, and I do count on you to help spread this message. One of the biggest things that you can do to support this podcast and help other people discover it is to leave an honest rating and review on Apple Podcasts or any other app that supports reviews. And don't forget to hit subscribe so new episodes are automatically pushed to your favorite podcast app. Looking for more ways to listen and learn? Get a free audiobook and a 30-day free trial at Audible by going to audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired. Here is my list of must-listen-to audiobooks updated July 2021. Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg, attached by Amir Levin and Rachel Heller. Atomic Habits by James Clear. The Five Dysfunctions of a Team by Patrick Lencioni. Crucial Conversations by Carrie Patterson. The Coaching Habit by Michael Stainer. The Body Keeps Score by Bessel van der Kolk. Rest by Alex Sujong Kim Pang. The Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins. Make It Stick. The Science of Successful Learning by Peter Brown. The Productivity Project by Chris Bailey. Meditation for Fidgety Skeptics by Dan Harris. Change Your Questions, Change Your Life by Marilee G. Adams. I always recommend to my coaches and admin that they read that book. The One Thing by Gary Keller, a required reading for all of our coaching group members. Procrastinate on Purpose by Rory Baden. The Four Tendencies by Gretchen Rubin. The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer. And if you're looking for something a little bit more magical, I have fallen in love with the Harry Potter series and the narrator, Jim Dale, is amazing. And of course, if you haven't yet boarded the Brene Brown bus, all of her stuff is great. Starting with Gifts of Imperfection, Daring Greatly, Rising Strong, and The Power of Vulnerability. And if you're an entrepreneur or leader, be sure to check out her book, Dare to Lead. Do you have something that you would like to share? Click on the podcast tab at ADHD Rewired. Click the button to be a guest at the top of the page and schedule a 15-minute interview. This is Eric Tibbers reminding you to keep learning, growing, and connecting. Self-care is not selfish. No matter what you get done or don't get done, you are still enough. And no matter how hard it feels, we can do hard things. And we don't need to do them in the hardest way possible. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you next week.